Montanha que o Lourinho da Batista. É bem. Gostei. All the time. All the time. God is good.
that God will take control. Amen? Amen. Next testimony. Hey, hey, hey. Come on. Next testimony. Sit down. MB. Praise the Lord. Andy, come. Praise the Lord. I just want to thank God for my life. I thank God for the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank God for the Holy Spirit. Amen. I thank God for the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit for me, Lord. Amen. I thank God for the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. I'll get this nice and clean. Andy, come on, keep your mouth shut. Come on, go upstairs. Come on, stand up, stand up. MB, stop this. Keep your mouth shut. Keep your mouth shut. Praise the Lord. He's able to do. He said, just trust and believe in me. So for everything that I go through this semester, I say, God, I give you glory. Because it's only you that can do it. And I thank God for everything that he has done for me being successful. Amen? Any testimony? God is good. All the time. All the time. You know, I just want to give God the glory for my life. And yesterday night, at around 12 o'clock, I was having an assignment within me. And I said, you know what, I want to call Pastor Isaac. I said, no, let me text him, let me, I was up I keep saying it, I didn't do it. I said, today after church, I'll call him to discuss that issue with him. And now he is here, I just want to give God the glory Amen. for the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I want to give God the glory. I call on Pastor Solomon to pray for the testimonies. God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. God is good. All the time. It says in Second Chronicles 7, 14, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and will heal their land. Amen. Uh, You are God, you are Lord, you are so like you. You are the reason why we are here this morning to praise you, to thank you, to lift your name up. Without you, we would have not been here. You are the God that wake us up this morning. You are the God that caught us. You are the God that provides our needs. You are the God when we are sick that heal us. Healing belongs unto you. Power coming from the throne of heaven, not from no man of God, but from you. Because it is your land. Yes. 
As we gather here this morning, our supplication, our petition, our request for each and every soul here in our land, and even this land and the whole universe that was made by you, may you answer it, O oh God. Amen. These and all other masses we pray in the name of Jesus. And let the saints say, Amen. Let the saints say, Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
unity and harmony. This is scheduled to take place in December 27, 2014, and the fee will be $25 per single. The tickets will be out by Saturdays, by Sunday, next week, Sunday, December the 5th. Next week will be the... Okay. The tickets will be out today, uh, December the 7th, 2014. There will be valuable items and a grand prize for raffle. Come prepare to win a valuable prize, especially the grand prize. I hope to see you on that day. Please pass on this valuable information and invite all friends and relatives that are single. The tickets are right here for sale. If you need ticket, please contact Sister Fatima Mado. Bible-based church. The Church of the I Am That I Am is a Bible-based church proclaiming uncompromised truth of God. Be equipped with the truth of God and you will never be deceived by preachers or satanic friends and relatives. The true word of God will become a weapon for your protection and guidance. Please find a new King James Version Study Bible or a translation you can understand and bring it to the church every Sunday. Bible studies always starts at 10 a.m. and please be punctual to know more about God. Communion ordinance. Due to spiritual reasons, Sister Isaac Colbert is now placed in charge of the communion item to be assisted by Sister Rajella Silla. This is brought to your notice for a special recognition and awareness of their divine assignment. May God be their helper in handling such a divine responsibility and tremendous tasks. May God bless you. Special dedication of our children. Our church, the children of the church will be dedicated on every first Sunday of the month through the year 2015 for a very special anointing. As a result, by this Sunday, this Sunday today, 2014, please bring all your children to be dedicated for God's anointing and protection. If there is any other announcement, it will come from the senior pastor, and may God richly bless you all. Um, I think um, by next week we'll be holding a choir meeting, right, Brother Frank? Next Saturday. Next Saturday, please, I'm appealing to you to be here. What time? Five o'clock. If you need to be picked up, please, let me know in advance. I'm the Buddha Buddha driver. I'll be ready to do that. Thank you. This is the announcement for today. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. God is good. It looks so dull. God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. It is tight time. It is a glorious day and a time for us to give to God. Amen? Amen. Of all that God has done for us. He's just asking 10% of our hands that we should give. I want to elaborate on this topic about what is tithing. Tithing is a way to bring God into our work and our relationship with Him. Amen? So tithe means to give a certain percentage of your hand income to God. We cannot give directly to God, but spiritually, He knows we have to give portion of what we have. And giving to Him, my brothers and sisters, is a joyful heart. You might not say, oh, when you give, you will get money back, but you are going to be blessed in different way. So let us try and make this effort to give to God from our hearts. It's not like when you say, oh, come and pay tithe. Oh, yes, they want tithe. From your heart. And you are happy to give to God. That's how we accept you. For you be obedient to his word. Amen? Amen. If we looked at um, 
Leviticus 27, 37. And all the tithes of the land, whether of the seeds of the land or of the fruits, is the Lord, it is holy to the Lord. Amen? Amen. When we get back to numbers, speaking to those, to those, the Levites, and, to, and say to them, when you take from the children of Israel, the tithe which I am giving you from them as your inheritance, then you shall offer up a heavy offering of it to the Lord a tenth of the tithe. Amen? Amen? So, children of God, it is our responsibility to abide to the word of God. Sometimes we think um, it's hard, but it's not hard in God's will. So I'm calling upon anybody that has to pay their tithes today, can they come up? Please. If you have your tithe, please come forward. My spirit magnifies the Lord.
Amen. Now we call upon the choir. The children's dedication. Bring the children, please. I'm a child too, I need to go back. Can you please join me here, please? I will pray for the children. Let, me see. You can Let us all pray for the children, please. These are our children. We present these children unto you, o God, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. We pray for your protection upon them. God, Heavenly Father, direct them, O God, in their going out and their coming in. Let them be protected by thee in the name of Jesus. Bless them, O God, with wisdom, with understanding, and the power to be able to discern between evil and good. Amen. And let them choose the good in the name of Jesus. Amen. We pray that you bless them, O God, in a special way. Thank you ever so much for everything. I'll ask the ministers to pray in silence. For these children, O God, Heavenly Father, let them be blessed and be protected in the name of Jesus. We thank you so much for them. Lord God, Heavenly Father, they will be here every first Sunday for them, O God, to be dedicated unto thee for spiritual enhancement in the name of Jesus. We pray that you bless them, O God, Heavenly Father. Make way for them, O God, in the name of Jesus. Let them be able to be so be sleeping without them in evil dreams. In the name of Jesus, bless them. Thank you so much for everything. I was grateful, God, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, I consecrate them. Bless them, O God. Every Father in their will not have God, but I protect them all. In the name of Jesus, from those evil people coming there to shoot in the school to do God work, God will pray that you protect them, O God. For demonic forces, for people, critical mockers, for evil spirit, let them be protected. Do Lord God Almighty Father. In this I pray through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. God is good. Now the choir for administration. The God is the message. Amen.
completely eradicates that kind of sickness there. We don't know what happened, but everybody is saying what they want to say about America drops chemical there, in this, in that. I say, well, I don't really think about it. We just leave our case to go. God will take care. Amen? Amen. Thank God for this family. Pastor Isa, Pastor, and Sister Daphne, thank you. May the Almighty God bless you. I'm watching for sentiment. My brother, I am always confusing. Keep keep names. Oh, Joshua. No. You have one more to go back from Moses. No problem. Brother Joshua. I welcome you and I thank you. May the Almighty God wish you bless you. Okay? Let us pray. Father Almighty Father, I want to thank you ever so much for this opportunity to wake me up this morning after I've prepared this sermon in thy name. God, I pray that you bless me. Bless the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart. Let me be able to do the right thing coming from you. In the name of the Father, Son and Holy Spirit, I pray. Amen. Amen. My brothers and sisters in Christ, you know, I want to talk about sins that you do commit unwillingly and even sometimes knowingly, but you consider it to be subtle. Subtle sin, that's how it is referred to. Sort of sin, sin that you commit without even knowing what you're doing. You think it's okay, but it is not okay at all. Is that what you're looking for? The outline. I don't know how line this. The sort of sin, when the theologians sat down to actually put together the category of sins, they came up with seven, which is pride, anger, Envy, impurity, gluttony, slothfulness, and avarice. I know you know what is pride, you know what is anger, you know what is envy, impurity, of course, you should know when you are not doing things which are pure. Then also gluttony to be actually eating too much. Then slothfulness is laziness. Then avarice, when you are extremely desire to become wealthy, it is sin. You see how God is so critical. You see how God is so wonderful. It will make something so pleasant, but it put a guidelines for you to actually see what you'll be doing. There it said, against you, you only have I seen and all evil in life in your sight. When David committed sin, don't sin. Adultery and murder. He was trying to make this sin to be a sin which is subtle. In other words, it is just a pleasure. God has given me power. I can kill anybody. I can do whatever I want. That's how he looked at it. And he did not say nothing. But I want to tell you, my brother, that there is nothing that you can do in your life in the eye of him when nobody knows about it. If nobody else knows, the Almighty God knows about what you are doing. That is evil. And I also want to tell you that for every sin that you committed against your fellow man, you have committed it against God. You will prove it as I keep going. When God said, I'm sorry, when David said, only you, you only have I seen. He said, I have seen to God. But he didn't do anything to God. No, he did it to a, to a woman. He did it to a man. Then he said, I've committed sin to you. But none of us, most of us don't know the fact that when you have committed sin, you have really have committed against God. You think you have just done it to, to Pastor Maru or to, to Pastor Solomon. But actually you have done it to God. When you commit sin against me, you have done it to God. This is one of the fact the reason why when Jesus Christ met with met with uh, uh, Saul on his way to Damascus. He said to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Did you ever, in any part of the Bible, did you ever read that Saul ever touched Jesus Christ? No, you can never find that. But when you touch a Christian, you have really touched the Lord Jesus Christ. That is the same reason also why he told you, 
You don't need to fight for yourself. When you give the stuff on the right, give them the left, let them do what they want. They will take care of that. If you are not actually of the spirit, if you are not actually godly, all of these things will not sit into your mind to know that what you are doing around you that is sinful, you are really doing it against God. That is why things are becoming so difficult with some of us. Because God cannot be presently entertain somebody who is committing sin at all times. You think that it is okay. God will just come and make you happy when you are really displeasing Him. Amen? You see, after, after they will have committed this dreadful sin, take your eyes wife, and he killed the other in the, the battle. He never went there to do this thing. But he gave the instruction. And he thought nobody would know that as a king. Nobody would know that. But for them to know that there is a God who is more powerful, the unseen God, he said, let the prophet. He said, go with this man. I was not going to read the story the way our Nathan went about bringing this forth on this man. Uh, he many uh, agree on the fact that he's guilty. I'll read it to you. Then the Lord sent Nathan to David, and he came to him and said to him, There were two men in one city, one rich and the other poor, which is clearly happening here today. Those who are taking advantage of us, Amen. The rich man had exceedingly many flocks and herds, but the poor man had nothing except one little new lamb, which he had bought and nourished, and it grew up together with him and with his children. It ate of his own food and drank from his own cup, and they in his bosom. And it was like a daughter to him. And a traveler came to the rich, to the rich man. This is later still talking to David, explaining the story for him to understand where he's coming from. He said, and a traveler came to the, to the rich man who refused to take from his own floor and from his own heart to, to prepare one for the wealthier, wealthier man who had come to him. But he took the poor man's lamb and prepared it for the man who had come to him. See the way he put it? You see the way Nathan the prophet put it to David, the king, the most powerful king, who can say, kill him now, now they kill you, right now, kill him right now, and they don't ask him any questions, you see? The king is powerful, but God is most powerful. So David, David's anger was greatly aroused against the man. The man they were telling him about, not knowing that they are telling him about himself. Great anger aroused. And he said to Nathan, As the Lord lives, the man who has done this shall surely die. What has he done? He pronounced death on himself. He put not death on himself. And if I keep reading, you will see where Nathan said, you will not die. Because at the time he said that God has accepted it, that you should die. But Nathan said, you will not die. And that exactly God was speaking to him, to speak to David. And he shall restore fourfold for the lamb. This is David speaking. Because he did this thing, and because he did this thing, and because he had no pity. Then let us say to David, you are the man. What a disgraceful thing. What a sorrowful thing. What a pathetic thing. For you to proclaim a judgment upon yourself, which you think that you are proclaiming it to another person.
I will tell you this. But God is who we say in his mouth or her mouth, I will tell you this. This is exactly what is happening here. You don't need to underrate the man who stands in front of you. The man who God, whom God has ordained to do his work. When he's speaking for every foolish thing that comes from his mouth, accept it to be from God. You will be blessed. If you didn't say the negative, God will bring the positive. Amen? Amen. Now, thus says the Lord God of Israel, I anointed you king over Israel. And I delivered you from the hand of Saul. You remember when Saul was chasing this man to kill him? Chasing David. By then he has already been, been anointed as king, but he's not yet a king. I gave you, I gave you your master's house and your master's wives into your keeping. And who is the master? Saul, the very Saul. All the things that belong to Saul was given to David. The palace where he was, that is where David went to do his kingship. And gave you the house of Israel and Judah. And if that had been too little, if that had been too little, I also would have given you much more. You see what is happening here? God is trying to tell you that even when you become so rich, there are people who become so rich, they want to be richer. They want more. When they start getting a thousand, they look for ten thousand. They start getting ten thousand, they look for a million. After the million, one billion. After the million, one multi-billion. But at the end times, the end day, the last day for you, where are you going to take all that? I remember a pastor was preaching and he said, this man is a very wealthy man. He has his wife and all these things. And he was on his bed and he told his wife, that when I die, I want you to bury me with some money. Then the woman said, yes, I will do that. And the pastor of the church that he was attending knows about it. And this man finally from the sick bed passed away. And then the woman, she is not stupid. She knows that the money cannot be used in heaven. So she wrote a check. A check of millions of dollars and put it in the casket. And they covered the casket. The casket. The casket. <laughs> and then the pastor asked the woman after his preaching and preaching and preaching that the other one and told them the story about what this man wants to happen. Then they asked the woman, said, uh, Your husband said that you should bury him with some money. Did you do that? The wife said, Yes. You show you good money there. Say, oh, yes, I want to make it. He's going to cash it in heaven. <laughs> And everybody laugh. You see, these are the kind of things. I want you to know that everything you have, everything you think you have, does not belong to you. Even your life does not belong to you. So when you're going around committing all those kind of sins that you think God doesn't know, He knows everything. And if you want to disgrace you, you bring that to light. Amen. He said, if that had been too little, I also would have given you much more. Why have you despised the commandment of the Lord to do evil in his sight? You have killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword. You have taken his wife to be your wife. And have killed him with the sword of the people of Ammon. And the people that they are fighting against. Now, therefore, the sword shall never depart from your house because you have despised me and have taken the wife of Uriah, the Hittite, to be your wife. Thus says the Lord, Behold, I will raise up adversity against you from your own house, and I will take you and I will take your wives before your eyes and give them. To your neighbor, and he shall lie with your wives in the sight of this son.
for you did it secretly, but I will do this thing before all the Israel, before the Son. God is taking care of the situation that took place between Bathsheba, Uriah, and David. So these are the kind of things. David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. Did Nathan, did David, and God bring him face to face to sin against him? No, but what I want to tell you is the fact that whatever you think you are doing against people, you are doing it against God. It will come back to you. God will take action. You will not see that go away. And be afraid of those who will never do nothing, will never fight back. You have done your evil against them, then they just turn their back and leave. I'll come to the subtle sin. I just told you a story which, which tells you that there is nothing you can hide from God. Another story that I want you to look to just about Potiphar. And it came to pass after these things that his master's wife cast longing, longing eyes on Joseph. And she said, Lie with me. But he refused and said to his master's wife, Look, my master does not know what is with me in this in the house. And he has committed all that he has to my hand. There is no one greater in this house than I. No. As he kept back anything from me but you. Because you are his wife. How then? This is the part I want you to pay attention to. He said, How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against who? God. You see, that boy was struggling. Going all around, he's being stolen by his brothers. Now he's on slavery. What if I bought him? Brought him to his house. But when he entered that house, things strange happened in the, in the life of Potiphar. He see that everything is flourishing, and he said, "Now you take over. Do everything. I'm not asking you for nothing." Now the wife has seen this, and when they describe, when they describe Joseph in the Bible, he is very handsome, very, well, very built. In a way that you can look at a man you admire, you want to be his wife. So this is the reason why the woman turned around to bring temptation. Joseph would have done that. Nobody will ever even know. And if you will ever even anybody know, they don't have got to say nothing. In fact, it would have been those other servants in the house would have been admiring Joseph. They will be coming to him as if he is the boss to ask something. And I bet it, I didn't know any one of us here. We have just oh boys, I have got something to actually better. You go and commit that sin. When you see Joseph said, How oh, can I commit this great sin against God? He was not going to, you know, he was not going to get any affair with God. But you know that when he has done this to mankind, you have done it to him. So that is why we Christians should be careful. We should know what we're doing. All the time you will see people even trying to call if I forgive them, let God do me so. If I do so, let God do so. As if you are in control. It may be, it may be no sooner you finish saying that kind of vow. You are going to sleep and pass off the next day. To know that you are not in control. It is God who is in control. Yes, Jesus Christ also said something like this that whatever you do to the least people around, you have done it to him. These are some of the few things. If you cannot read the Bible, if you cannot get accustomed to reading the Bible, these are some of the little things that you should look at as a Christian and try to do them. He said, Whatever little thing you have done for this least people, you have done it to me. I will read it for you in Matthew 25 and 40. He said, And the king will answer and said to them, this I just call it halfway. As shortly as I said to you, in as much as you did this, you did it to one of the least of this, my brethren, you did it to me. 
Verse 45 to 46 says, Then he will answer them, saying, Assuredly, I say to you, inasmuch as you did, you did do, inasmuch as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. So if you don't do any good to anybody, then you do not do it for nobody. Then look at the consequences that you, you get. He said, And these will go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. So you have done the wrong thing. We go to eternal punishment. Those who have been doing all these good things will go to heaven. I don't want to mention about Saul and Jesus anymore on the way to Damascus. I've said it already. But I want you to know that this sort of thing that we'll talk about, some of the things that you think you're doing, this whole lie. It's a sort of sin. You think it's okay. When you go to work, you have been here like 15 minutes late. When they told you to sign in, you go and sign in 10 o'clock because you're supposed to start 10, but you're already there at 15 minutes late. It's a sort of sin. Mm. <coughs> I did not say that. This is one of our topics in school. So I'm telling you today. When you meet somebody, you ask him to borrow you money. And that person gives you that money. You don't pay back. It's a sort of sin. It's sin. So you see all these kind of things, even the way you say things to your mom. Disrespectful man is sin. These all are called sort of sin. You know why? Because you do not see them, you do not stand outline in the Ten Commandments. But when the Lord Jesus Christ came, he split those Ten Commandments into two. And if you look at them, all of those ten are really inside that too. Because the very first soul of the Ten Commandments has to do with God and man. Then the six has to do with man and man. So what did he say? He said, Lord, the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. Then even the second commandment of his life unto it. He said, love your neighbor as yourself. What is the difference? If you love somebody, you cannot do evil to him. You will not, right? Yeah. If you love somebody, you will not do evil to him. No matter what happened, you will get mad. You will want to, 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 to break the chair that you're sitting on, but you will not touch that person to feel any single pain. That's how much I love my wife. Wow. Wow. <laughs> My brothers and sisters in Christ, when you steal from somebody, you are really stealing from God. You know, some of these things we have involved, we have done it for the Almighty God forgive us. Let him have mercy on us. You see, the Bible is so explicit. It is so to the point. It has also said in Romans 3.23, you all know that passage in the Bible. We all have fallen short of the glory of God. We all have sinned. So nobody, the pastor, who meant to be the leader of this church, or whatever it just may be, the Pope, maybe you will understand that if I say the Pope. He's a sinner. He has committed sin. Oh, yes. Right from the beginning to this present time, he's still committing sin. Even when you lie down on your bed, you start making plans. Evil plans against your fellow man, they are such a sin. You have sin also. So please, let us go on and some of these things that we see happening around us. We have to really find a way to avoid them. When you proclaim to be a Christian, a true Christian, these are some of the things that you will do. Avoid the evil things, avoid bad things, avoid God's sin. These are all such sins. Avoid judging people. These are all sorts of sins. You are committing sin in doing that. Because you're making the wrong judgment. You don't even know the wrong judgment. You don't even know who you're talking to. Who you're talking about. But you make conclusive statement to say that this is this about this person. When you are wrong, this is sort of sin. So remember, when you go to work, if they don't give you 
that 15 minutes late, please sign the right time. It's a sort of thing. Madhu is also guilty. Everybody is guilty. You understand? So I want you to know that this sort of sin we talk about is thing that you think you can do conveniently, nobody notice, or you don't even care about it. The word sort of actually means that thing that you think that you do, if you want to know about it, you have to actually pay attention attentively to actually know about it. Then it becomes unsolved. Other than that, it is something where you are not able to figure it out and tell exactly what it means. So please, stealing is robbing God. You take the life of somebody, you have to take the precious property of the Almighty God. Amen? Amen. I think this is your God enough. I leave you this words in the name of Jesus. Let us pray. God Almighty Father, we know that we are sinners. Do commit sins in words and thoughts and in action each and every day. We pray, O God, Heavenly Father, that you continue to look down upon us with pity. Forgive us, O God, Heavenly Father. We know that when you have mercy upon us, you give us grace. It means you have given us what we do not deserve. And when you have mercy upon us, indeed, you have taken what we deserve. So, God, we thank you ever so much. And we pray that you continue to bless us and have mercy upon us right through our lives in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I pray. Amen. 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 God is good. All the time. 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 No. But is it two days ago? The prayer breakfast we have, we just found that that video on the on the internet when we were at the Church of the First Event, that prayer breakfast we did. And what was the confession I made was I used to tell those sorts of lies. I'll be lying on my bed, phone call, what be phone call? I say, I'm all the yeah, it's the me. Say, who oh, oh, like a lie? No white lie, no black lie, like a lie. And I thank God for this message too, because I was reading the book, I was reading the story of um, David, and I even, I was in, I was, I meditate on it very strongly. I was thinking, I even, I, I, I put things together. Because I was looking at it at times, we were not prepared to see just one side and say, let me just go to it just for this one thing. And then you get caught up. So let us pray for the pastor. Father God in heaven, I just give you the glory, Father, I give you honor. Father, I thank you for your servant as humbly as he has given us this food from you. Father, we pray that you replenish him. As he has decreased for you to increase, Father, we pray that you replenish for him. Father, thank you for his life. Father, we pray that you continue to do mighty things in this ministry. Oh, Father God and heaven, let your will be done in his life. In this we pray through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. God is good. All the time. All the time. The choir, I think we have offering time. Blessing time. <laughs> Offering time. If you have your 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 tithes, you were not here, you came late. We already collected the tithes. If you still have it, come with it when you're coming with your offering. The pastors will pray for you. Amen. If you have your offering, still come with it. Now you're in the choir. Hallelujah. Offering time, blessing time. Please show us, please stand up. Let us, you know, get the money out of the wallet. Amen. 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 We pray.
of heaven without a magnified and glorious name, evermore praise thee and say, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are filled of thy glory, Hosanna in the highest, glory to thee, O Master. O Lamb of God that takest away the sins of the world. O Lamb of God that takest away the sins of the world. O Lamb of God that takest away the sins of the world. Let us pray for the sin of person. Almighty God, whose kingdom is everlasting and thy power infinite, have mercy upon the whole church and all the acts of thy chosen servant, Reverend David Madhu Bangura, that in thee above all things seek thy honor and glory and study to preserve thy people committed to each church in wealth, peace, and godliness, that these people may faithfully serve, honor, and obey him in thee and for thee according to thy blessed word and ordinance through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with thee and the Holy Spirit liveth and reigneth ever, one God, world without end. Amen. Let's all decide to pray for ourselves. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies, we are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so by faith to receive the Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, that the bread which we break may be unto us the communion of his body, and the cup with blood with communion of his blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and in us. Amen. The Lord Jesus, in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In like manner also, after supper, he took the cup and gave it to them, saying, Drink it, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for the remission of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink of this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. The body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which was crucified for thee. The body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which was crucified for thee. The blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which was shed for thee. The blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which was shed for thee.
Chilena Sildi Communion. Glory be to God on high and on earth, peace and goodwill toward men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee, we give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord, our God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty. Amen. Amen. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Spirit, at the Most High in the glory of God the Father. May our transgressions and iniquities be buried in the flesh of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And may the blood of the Messiah cleanse and purify us. Grant that this church may be endowed with heavenly wisdom, that it may strengthen all who come into its fellowship and by its teaching guide them in the way of Christ. Let's all recite the prayer of thanksgiving. We give thanks to you, Lord, that you have fed us with Christ and with the Holy Spirit, and you have united us with Christ and given us the fortunes of that heavenly banquet prepared for all mankind. As we believe so, we have administered and accepted this heavenly banquet in Jesus' name. Amen. May, the, may his blessings and divine grace be with us all. That's all we may undertake to do in his name be surely make us prosper. May the blessings of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit rest remain and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. No. Alright, this concludes our communion ceremony. I'll invite Pastor Isa to say something to us. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, I, you know, I really want to thank God for the opportunity to be here this afternoon with my wife and our dear friend, Pastor Joshua. Thank uh, God for Pastor Mano and thank God for the message. And I was listening. There was one point I was waiting for the definition of Soto. And then towards the end, he gave the definition, then I smiled, I said, okay, this is what I was waiting for. You know, we are dealing with the CLN church. And sometimes it's like, we have to bring it all the way to a spider. You know, when they say somebody is so to, you know, they come out and see them. When you get some anky banky you wear the blame. You know, see that close, you see that green, but you try to describe them in another way, but you know, see that green, because you know what you want. But at the end of the day, you know what's good for you. You know, but I really thank God. Why I'm saying this, as a mother has come along with. Now he's emphasizing what we are emphasizing, what we used to emphasize, the word of God. People, please stay with the word of God. I'm saying this because I'm not sure if we'll be here again for the rest of the year, maybe until sometime in the future. Because uh, we are living for Sierra Leone the 30th of December. We are going for good, and um, we are going to take over the Ministry of Christians in Action. I listen so well to my sister, you know, I feel for you, and uh, I won't say I don't understand what you're going through because you have been there. I was there from May to August. I'm going back, we are going, I'm just depending on the grace of God to take us through. There is a basic thing we're going to learn, going to Sierra Leone, they call it the ABC. You know, if people can only listen and follow instruction, I think the Ebola will improve. The Ebola is a matter of education. It is a deadly disease, but it is very simple to listen to the message. The message is A, B, C. You can say either always be careful or avoid body contact. I don't care how much you love that person, how much that person means to you. Don't touch the person. Don't go close to the person. So sometimes that's why people are dying because they love the person, they think they want to go to the grave of the person. But again, I'm saying this because please, I know I will try to contact Sister Omo and Pastor Maru. Please be praying for us. 
At one time, we were part of this congregation. It was just a sad moment that the church had to split. We don't have to go there. But thank God for the relationship that we do maintain. Please keep us in your prayer. Every time you meet, please pray for us. Consider us like a missionary from your church. You know, and be praying for us. Sometimes it's not so much about the money because it's going to be different. Our standard of living is going to be different. It's not like when we used to be in the States. Over there, it's purely ministry. We are going for ministry. Sometimes people think we are crazy for going back to stay here. But we are not crazy. There's no place like home. You know, God is faithful, God will keep us. God has given us wisdom to be able to use that wisdom. I'm going to get the we will be part of our people yeah. and just minister to our people in Sierra Leone. You know, Sierra Leone means so much to us. And so I want to continue to encourage Pastor Mado to preach the word. I'm looking at the church, most of the people I used to see here are not here today. But one thing I can tell you, you are not here. Well, that's sad to say. Yes. You know, that's really sad. I mean, I don't know where their priority is. So, if you really love the Lord, I don't care how much time you spend in study. You're supposed to be in church if you are very committed. So, that tells you where people stand in terms of their commitment. So, for me, I don't want to even mention that or talk about that because they show they are not committed. That's not the kind of life God has called us to live. I mean, you can be in this world, but you're not to be part of the world. You know, if you really going to marry, where is your commitment? Who is first in your life? You know. So, regardless, let's continue to pray. God knows that those who belong to Him, those who are faithful, God will continue to bless you. Now that Pastor Maru is emphasizing on the Word of God, what a secret for your church to go is worship. Worship. Worship the Lord. When we go to church, let us worship. Yes. If you spend time worshiping the Lord, I will tell you, you will see the difference. Yes. Yes. Let us sing in the world and let us worship God. God wants us to worship Him more and more. Pastor Maru is here as an instrument. And so look up to God. Don't look up to Pastor Maru. Look beyond Him. He is here as an instrument, but God is going to use Him. Forget about those who have left the church. Maybe one day will know they will come back. Yeah, consider them as your brothers and sisters. And don't think anything bad. Don't be subtle in your heart against them. Because some of us who do sin against them, this is what we have been talking about, subtleness. You know, some, some of us don't think any positive thing about them anymore. And that's not supposed to be the way. Don't be subtle. And when you see them, you pretend, you smile. But at the same time, you are subtle in heart. Because of the way they let it go. No, let them go. They do when they will come. So when they come, we open our hands and embrace them. I guess our heart is in this church because of the relationship we have with the people that are in this church. I am so thankful. I say it again for Pastor Mado. You know, life is patient. So when it comes to spirituality, we are not the one doing the work. It is God. And so God is really doing something in his life. I'm really thankful for that. And I want to commend you, Pastor Maru, to God be the glory. And the preaching I have today, this is just the beginning. I know greater things are coming. So God bless you, Sister Umu. All you are here to do is to support him. You just lost on the scene. Don't make yourself known. Just give him all the support that you need. Keep praying for him. Your son will come. And you do what God has asked you to do. Sister Isatu, I'm glad that Sister Isatu is here. We're all faithful. You know? And Brother Shaka, I know you as well. When you say you're there for somebody, you are there for them. So this church has been blessed with gifts, gifted Amen. people. Amen. So if you are here, you are not here by chance. You are here because this is where God wants you to be. So please use your gifts. This is what God is expecting of you. Use your gift to the glory of God and for the building of this place. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. God bless you. God is good. You know, I just thank God. The only sad part of it is the thirtieth of December. I'm gonna miss my brother. I don't wanna cry. So, but as we always say, say no more. There are many ways to reach him. When she, when he was in Freetown, we did messages. He was in there, right message yeah. I sent them to him. He still, you know, I just thank God and continue to pray for us too. We're going to be prayer partners. We pray for your ministry, pray for our ministry. And give us the support we needed. 
physically, spiritually, and whatever you can do for this church. Pastor Bongo, are you going to say something? Oh, uh, no. I mean, we are ready to sing the Christmas hymn. You know, this church doesn't like to sing hymns, but I forced them to take at least one. Pastor Easter, I don't know if this is true. I, I'm a heart that in Sierra Leone today. They will not look at me and say, Ebishio, Ebishio. <laughs> is that true, sir? I don't know. I'm one the butter. Every show. I want the butter. Every show. I mean, those shakers sometimes do what they are here. Alright, guys. Um, this is Christmas season. If you love Jesus, do everything about him. We're going to sing the carol, O come on ye faithful. So please rise and turn to the very first page. You don't see too many pages, but you see page number 393. No problem, let's go. O come on ye faithful.
Aleluia. 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 Lift up your voice and pray for Sierra Leone. I guarantee you, three months from now, three months from now, not by your power, not by mine, not by anybody's power here. If anybody has power to heal Ebola, let them raise their hand. But if we don't have that power and we recognize that God is the one who can heal Sierra Leone, I guarantee you, He said three months from now, Ebola will wipe off from Sierra Leone. I start asking God right now on behalf of the brothers.
Lord. We thank you for everyone in here. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Lord, we thank you so much. Before the benediction, please let us share the grace together. The grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Rest in our body for us and our forevermore. Surely, the lesson of the shall fall upon us all days of our lives. We shall go to the house of God forever. Be seated. Pastor Isaac. During the prayers, I was instructed to give you my kind so that you would get the key.